today we're going to learn how to use a package called Emmet on Sublime and how to write your own snippets. Bye bye guys. Love me. Love me. And what you'll need today is uh, Sublime. If you haven't downloaded this uh, text editor, uh, it's a really good text editor. I'm sure there's other ones that you might be using and that's okay. Um, but if you would like to try out uh, Sublime, definitely do. Um, I'm going to uh, start from the beginning, show you how to install the package called Emmet. Let me go to here. Um, and I already went there, but let me just back up to the home page. There it goes. And here it is. Here's the home page in case you need to find it and see it. Uh, we, You could download it. And I'll go through the process. Again, like I said, there's many uh, other um other uh, editor that, that it does support and it'll give you exactly ex exact ex instructions on how to download that uh for this instance we're going to use sublime text and i'll click that and it'll show me exactly how to install so how to install um so it pretty much tells you to go to, to the package control if you're familiar with uh, sublime that should be easy for you um, but I'm going to go, go through the process. I removed it for the purpose of at least showing you how to get that in there. It's fairly simple. It takes me two seconds. Um, and we'll also go through some other stuff. But let's let's back up and jump on there. Uh, jump on that when I get to it. So right now, I'm going to Sublime. Sublime is now open. I'm going to press Control shift p for the package control. And we are going to install a package. And that package is called Emmet, and it comes right up. Click it, install it, you're good to go. It's that simple. Okay, so how do I know it's installed? Um, so here's the cheat sheet for Emmet. Um, it, the, the syntax is here, uh, support for HTML, the support for CSS, and the support for XSL, I believe. Yep, is right here. So all this info you can you can even download if you prefer to have it uh, on you know as a download format, or you can just keep it visiting the site like I do. Um, but let's test it out. So here's their first item using the child uh, example. We click it, and that's it. It builds it out. Okay. So it's pretty simple. Okay. So let me just demonstrate exactly how I typically use it on a site. Uh, and typically I use uh, uh, Bootstrap, so you'll see me write the classes for Bootstrap um, 3. Um, so you'll see how powerful it is there. So let's first uh, call the doc type. And that's all you have to do. And boom, you have it. And here's your title. Uh, how powerful is Emmet? How powerful is Emmet? Question mark. All right, try to keep your code clean. In the body, we're going to write, let's say, a section. It might be for the home page. It might be, a, you know, it might be just a quick uh, introduction to the site, whatever it might be. So let me start by telling the class. Uh, yeah, we could tell. Actually, we should write a section for the home page. And in that, we'll have a child called um, container fluid. And that class, and this will be a class there also called uh, section one or something like that. Okay, and in that we'll have the row. Okay, and in that we'll have two columns. I like to start small and right there. Um, actually, I'm sorry, just start smaller so we can do more of the, uh, the phone. Uh, the mobile first uh, and we'll want two of those so it does some math too um, so that we go click tab to make sure it executes it and there it goes okay so my first half is going to be some information information about this site and typically you want to make it in h1 so this is this is the cool thing about it so you didn't write the markup right first or the syntax for emmet uh that sucks right no big deal what you can do is con 
press Control W, and that brings up this item here that we, where it allows you to rewrap something you missed. Um, so at the bottom, you see it right here. Uh, I'm going to make this an H1. You know, this is what it needs on the site. So the SEO picks it up, and the website picks it up. And then on the other section, on the right side, uh, what I have is maybe a list menu. Maybe it's my nav, uh, like a weird nav on the right side that just gives you a quick links, right? Um, I am not going to write that. Let's just say this is nav one. You know, maybe they gave you already the names of each item that you have to do, right? So you don't have control of that. So you just, they gave it to you as a Word doc, which happens to me all the time. They said these are the, uh, items for um for the page uh so you won't have much to say but that's okay we copied and pasted into here and we want to wrap these guys in a order list you maybe we're going to use it for our nav so let's wrap that um again you're going to control w which will help you wrap it uh we're going to call the order order list we want to call that nav um and then we want to tell it to also make it a list items so it goes to list items. What you want to do is click the star again. It's the math. It'll do the math for you. It'll see how many items are there, and then oh, oh, uh, build for that. So there you go. Also, these items are going to be linkable. So we want to add the A there. So again, just take a look at that. It's exactly how Emmett um, writes it or tells you to write it. So I've gotten familiar with it, and I love it. Um, and it's a great tool. So enter, and we're good to go. Um, I now I go back to these items sometimes to type them in individually or I just pretty much click one and that hold command and then I click each one it gives me two items and then I could write you know uh, two here um, you can do that you can also write more if you needed to I don't think you really need to I'm not even gonna show you that part it just doesn't make sense unless it's something else for instance if let's say we introduced a new row so and in that row you had uh, a couple columns uh, but you wanted to start with one so column uh, dot column dot uh, four just more four okay and that you want to multiply times three all right that's that and then in there that's how when you want to start using this because you're gonna write it three times you don't want to write each individual piece so then you'll tell it like this is a in the in here we want to have an image and that image can be you know uh, image one dot jpeg uh, and under that you want to have another little section called info so dot info and in there you want to have some information info about this this image that's pretty much it um, and again maybe we messed up here what we really wanted to do is wrap this in a um, actually you know what let me just go back it might be easier for us to just say ah we messed up let's go back right P and then in there you want to put this is the info about the image above cool and that's it that's pretty much it this is as simple as going to get for HTML and and you know you'll have other things like a siblings you'll be able to use uh, uh, the climb up uh, functions uh, siblings I tend to use less as I plan it better nowadays uh, but you will have to use it sometimes uh, for instance Let's write another row, and in that row, uh, let's just write something that make might make sense, right? Let me see what can make sense. Maybe there's three, three items, and they're not all the same. So it'll be div, and then an image right below it, and then another div, div called uh, bottom, and we can add this div to the top. And now all those items should line up. So here they are, right? They're not wrapping inside each other. Uh, so that's pretty much the sibling. And you can keep practicing these items. Again, you can multiply. You can do a lot of things. It's great. It's a great tool. A great, amazing tool. 
Uh, but let me just show you the CSS. The CSS itself is also very powerful. So let's name this section. What we did, name section one. So let's add a new class. And there we're going to go dot section one. And the reason you don't see like the markup color is because we still have it on the HTML. So we want to switch that to CSS on the right side. And there you go. Uh, maybe this has a background. Uh, and you know the items will start popping up to help you, uh, you know, as, as, as you write them. So with an image, and here it is. And that background would have a slash img jpeg, whatever it might be. Uh, maybe my background color is actually more like a like a gray color. Um, so you keep writing as much as you need. Uh, maybe the whole what you also want to write is the font weight. Uh, and let's look for that just so I know. What you guys should be looking for, font weight, font weight. Let's see, font weight. Oh, here it is. Uh, font weight normal, bold. Yep, it's bold. So let's copy this right, right here. As you memorize them, you won't need the cheat sheet anymore. Um, and you can keep writing as much as you like. So max height. You know, max height is great to have. And that could be, you know, 100 viewport, viewport, height, or minimum height, whatever you want to do. The other thing I wanted to kind of jump back to was uh, we can actually write Greek. So maybe sometimes you don't have the text for that. It's something that's coming later. You want to write uh, just Greek really quick. Boom. You got it right there, Lorem. And you can keep writing it. And it'll keep writing it for you. So that's also very beneficial for those that... Uh, write um, HTML but don't have the exact exact content yet okay now what happens if you can't find a snippet that you want it right sometimes the snippets just haven't been created or you will have your own individual snippet uh, well you can create your own so Emmet allows you to do that so the first thing you want to do is maybe go to their website uh, the site should give you some sort of information on how to do that I believe it's documentation uh, cons right there customization and here it tells you exactly what you have to do um, the one thing I think it tells you is to go to the readme to find what they're talking about uh, so let's do that first so you want to go to sublime preference uh, package settings Emmet, and you want to check the default and scroll to the bottom at the bottom you'll see it right there customization okay the place and here's a snippet on how to do it i would just copy and paste this into your own user preference so you have to go to again package emmet and this time you go to user and here oh mine's is here yes okay great so i already kind of explained to you you have to write it so here's an html example uh this is it i think i believe this is more like the json uh, file that they have so you can write it in that format uh, so again I already wrote these uh, but um, just to kind of go back and show you what that was let me just get these guys out of the way you want to put them in these brackets and you want to put a snippet what you want to do is start like this uh, snippets HTML abbreviation and example is the snippet call so let's save this really quick and you want to go to your HTML file and test it out. Let's open that somewhere you can see it right away. Let me clean these up for you. Okay. And we'll start with the section called test. Actually, let's give it an ID. I think you should really be there. Test. All right. And then we're going to put in example example space and there it is it's exactly what they wrote there uh, this is an example okay uh, if you wanted to change that I mean I don't know why you would but uh, this is my test we save that and we try it again we go to HTML file and write in example and Boom, it wrote something else. It didn't write the test section. Why is that? Huh. Let's troubleshoot a little bit. Uh, 
Why do I feel like I think you can only write HTML in here? Yep, that's what it is. You can only write HTML in here, so that's what it did. Okay. So that's it. Uh, that's that piece. Now, let's say you wanted to do CSS, kind of same format. You can definitely just grab this and copy it if you wanted to. So you start here. Uh, this time you want to put a comma there. You want to call this CSS. Uh, and you want to call this a snippet. Okay, and that's your snippet for that. And we'll call this example you know what let's keep that just I just want to show you what it could do uh, so we'll say uh, uh, zero uh, well, let's say let's say this was for padding we'll say two pixels two pixels two pixels two pixels okay and we'll call this example yeah I haven't bought it. thanks okay so Let's go back to our CSS, and in here we want to say it's padding. Padding, example, and look, it already comes up, which is great, right? Mm, did I do something wrong? Example, padding, example. There you go. Sorry about that. I'm not sure what I did there before. Ah, oh, stop pressing save. No, oh, used to that. Okay, example, look at it. Tap, 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 tap. And you just keep doing as many as you want. Obviously, the example is also going to write in HTML something else, which we saw already. Okay, it's going to keep writing the span. And we could just keep changing this to be something else. Uh, maybe it's a div that has a class of whatever. And let's see if that works. Oh yeah, sorry about that. You gotta write these in single quotes. All right, and let's see what comes up again. HTML example, boom, whatever. Right? You pretty much have it. Um, and that's my. That's exactly how cool Emmet is and how powerful it is. Um, but let me know how you use it. Let me hear your tips and tricks. If you enjoy this video, subscribe to the page. Uh, I'm really trying to make these uh, videos happen for everyone. I kind of enjoy this work, so uh, I want to send it out to uh, everyone to um, learn a little bit. Okay? Thanks so much. Bye.